Today I want to review the Mark Polo pet tracking device and see if I can find a lost quarter plane from quite a distance. So for this reason I came up here with my bike you see in the background which is nice and environmentally friendly I hope. <laughs> um, came up here because it has a nice view. This is the tracking device, the locator device you are using to find your lost plane. The other part is a small uh, tag, a small um, radio frequency emitting device. So a sender and this here is the receiver. So the sender is back there where the wood starts. There's a little pavilion and there I hit the tracking device and no one steals it. So it's actually uh, about 800 meters from here. It's behind these first three in the middle and it's uh, behind the wood roof of this pavilion. So you have the, the power knob here. Just hold it down, it beeps. Oh yeah, you can actually read it put this way. So, because it's a pet tracker, it shows you the icon of a dog in the center here. Down here you have uh, three different colors which correspond with your tags and uh, menu buttons and the start button. So now I have the red tag, I press it, then you can choose between monitor and track, for me always track is the interesting thing. So I press the select button. And now you should hold it like this, like a pistol or something, or like a can. And we already have an arrow. And the percentage reading here shows me that it's uh, about, yeah, it's 60%. And the more, the nearer you are. So we're in good range, so if you have clear line of sight with some tree like here, you get one kilometer for sure. So, of course this example here is easy because I already know the direction and it's straight now. And you have to get used to the tracking because you don't get a solid arrow all the time, like you see now, just have the percentage reading. But now I have a straight arrow. So now I turn right about 90 degrees. Oh, now it works. So yeah, with the with the range, I'm quite happy. Uh, as I said, you now see the tracker and the location itself is here. I will do a GPS reading. It's actually more than 800 meters. It's 838 meters. To the device itself, uh, I don't fully understand why these panels are linked this way, but I guess they have the antenna grid inside and yeah, it's not really convenient to hold, but I guess it's it's important to hold it that way so you don't block the antennas and, and yeah, and get good receiver signal. So 61%. Uh, I will drive down the road uh, and about the middle I will stop and check again. So let's head over to the bike. So as you can see we are now 311 meters. Not really the half but okay. Uh, I have this tree uh, blocking the line a bit okay they may degrade it sometimes okay I turned it and now it shows my direction yeah and now it runs straight so it's really not like the cursor would give you really accurate degrees where to move to but it's more like head straight forward or go left or go right 
and now if I hold it that way yeah it says change location okay so I changed location yeah we have again the straight arrow it's now 55 percent when I was up on the hill much further away I had 60 percent so I can't really uh, read something out of the percent value and now I got an arrow again Okay, we see 99%, we must be really close. And you get an arrow, so let's find it following this arrow. Okay, curves it down. So if you always keep moving at some degree, uh, keep wandering then you get a solid cursor and now we're really we're late here I hit it here in the pavilion where Venny lives I hit it up here somewhere yeah where is it So this is the lost tracking device. Normally you would tape it with this dual-sided tape to your plane or copter or whatever. There, and we found it. So we can turn off here and here. This is the RC modified smallest possible version. 12 or 14 gram. I'll post it later to turn it on. Stay on it. Three blinks here mean turning on and having full battery. If it only blinks two times, you're half battery, and if it only blinks one time, then you should charge it before you can use it, or before it would last long. So I give you the numbers how long the small battery will. Uh, will power this device, but it's a few days. Enough. Yeah, the, the thing is powered by a little uh, battery. Here's the charger. The charging port is the same. It goes into power here, so you can charge this as well. Uh, not sure yet what this alarm connector is for. This is the larger one. The 24 or 25 gram version you see it has a fat lipo or battery inside and this will last for like a month and this is the green tag so you would use the green button on the locating device so first review with the helmet on <laughs> maybe it looks dumb um, what have I learned uh, it works on great distances, not sure on the max distance yet. Um, it works uh, not so bad if you keep moving. You should walk around and keep moving and try always to have the cursor or the, the little arrow uh, pointing straight to 12 o'clock. And if you keep moving uh, you will find it. So this is a uh, motorcycle RC shim from Eichberg. Um, have I already shown you the stunt here? I'm not sure. If I didn't, I will, I will include it here because we're on this pavilion and I will flew here. Check it out. Hello, this is Erze Shim and this is the locator. We can make a test. Uh, I placed the quad, the, the little mini quad, somewhere in the bushes and I want to try this locator. So you turn it on here, then you have four buttons uh, which I assigned to a locator tag. Now I turned it on. 
and now you just turn yourself around and see where you get the best signal. It also helps if you hold it a bit higher and always move in circles and also in the park try to avoid dog shit. <laughs> so I can already hear it beeping now from about 20 meter distance and get medium to quite good signal. And if you turn, it gets worse. So this should be the bush we should search for. So these are about 20 meters. Looks nice. Uh, now uh, in about 10 meters or so you can already hear the beeping of the tag itself. So it helps you additionally. And it gets warmer and warmer. And we have it. It also helps if you make the little quads better visible. In the park I had only a rough estimate of the distance. So here I took GPS measurements to see it's 157 meters when you get your first beep. Uh, uh, yeah. So these are the first beeps if you look in the right direction. And if you point in the right direction, you get like, like the minimum one. So the locator works quite well. I would say on short distances it's a really good and cheap solution. Uh, the batteries are said to last for two months to five months on the tag itself. You can't turn uh, on or off the tag, you just can isolate the batteries so it doesn't work if you want to store it for a long time. So that's a good thing, you can't forget to turn it on before you fly. Bad thing is yeah, it, it wastes some energy if you, if you store it and don't, don't turn it off. The device itself also has a little uh, battery on the back. It's CR2032 and yeah, this device turns itself off after some inactivity. And this gets in through the shards. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you can turn off the, the beeping sound if you're near to the crash site, uh, so you can hear the beeping of the locate of the tag itself, which helps. Um, yeah, and as I said, the range here in the park with some trees uh, was around 100 meter, which is good. So I'm quite happy with it. Motorcycle enabled now. <laughs> it's. Here in my little box I got from IKEA, uh, 15 euro, and this is my little box with extra props, with the fetch axe, and hidden down there is the micro quad. Thanks for watching. Keep supporting me. Uh, subscribe if you didn't already. I promise I will post good videos uh, regularly yeah and please please share my videos share them with others if you really like them give a thumbs up yeah and always look in the description below because I try to include as much information in the description to the videos as I can so thanks it's enough bye